Hello, Dream Team. Welcome along to The Good, The Bad and The Rugby. It's important to say this isn't our first official show of a new season. That is going to be out as per normal on Wednesday, wherever it is that you do your listening and you're watching. But we wanted to come together and to explain a little bit as to why we've delayed the start of our season three, but also to take the time to pay our respects and acknowledge the extraordinary events of the last few weeks uh, surrounding Her Majesty the Queen. Haskentins are here. This isn't going to be some deep dive into exactly what you've been through, but I think the three of us have chatted a lot and certainly you and I have been extremely moved over what we've seen and, and, and the way that we've sort of communicated and you've had a lot going on. Uh, understandably how are you how's it all been and how uh, do you reflect on it all yeah, yeah obviously it's been sad emotional but ha but happy yeah uh, you can say that I in think some you ways say that. amazing in other ways um to see the family come so close together over over uh, overnight and just you know no one you can't re you never predict it obviously at 96 you're old lady you don't you know at some point it's going to happen but you're never ready for when it when it does and and i'm not even a you know a direct sort of family member in in terms of blood so uh, but watching what my wife uh, what zara had to go through in terms of you know she obviously she loved loved the queen beyond beyond everything else so you know they're connection with horses same with with the the princess royal that they, they had a real sort of bond around that and um uh yeah i i what really blow blew me away was just how the country how the world you know i think they they invited 180 foreign dignitaries and all 180 said yes and turned up and i think i think the way that it was then none of them made a fuss it wasn't about you know for the first time ever a US president or whatever isn't making it about him. Mm. He slips into the background, does whatever he's he's told to do, um, and I think that's just a mark of of who she was, um, you know, and the sort of power she commanded in it without really asking for it. She didn't need, she didn't need it. She just it was a weight she just carried naturally, um, you know. And I, I just and then what she was as a person. I think you know, no fuss, get on with it. And there was a good story that I, whether it's a hundred percent true, I'm not sure. I got sent it by the next ar army, um, a friend of mine, and it was a, it was a basically around the plane that was used to uh, bring her back from Scotland to to England, and uh, they had it wasn't the original plane picked, and they had to change it, and they went for this big old plane to make it more dignified. When this they, is in the planning, isn't it? Yeah, so they changed the planning. It was a, it was a smaller plane that wouldn't have allowed them to to get the coffin on very easily and and he had to go through this changing process saying i think we should use just a bigger plane it makes it more dignified when when loading and everything else I obviously had to get sent upstairs to to get the uh, to get the all clear and then apparently uh, the, the note that came back whether this was her exact words where the queen sort of said if it because it was the same plane that was used to bring her bodies back from afghanistan and she was basically just two lines said uh, if it's good enough for my boys it's good enough for me and that in itself just sort of sums her up it was you know they were her boys and and she and hopefully i mean it'd be just amazing to talk to people who who were uh, like the coffin bearers were just incredible yeah. i think i think you know everyone it's a, it's a tough gig and and some of them so young at 19 or whatever and and you know, when you join the service, is it still for Queen and Country? Because that's how she thought it was still, uh, and it'd be it'd be lovely to hear what they thought and um, and how they felt that week went. I mean, it was it was just amazing. It to was watch. extraordinary. Um, I will openly admit, I had a little tear in the eye when Hugh Edwards said what he said at six thirty. I had, had tears in I the eyes. Had, I mean, that was the first thing that hit me. Yeah. It was he yeah. almost had a. He had one, yeah. yeah. And actually, Kirsty Young, I don't know if you saw her summation at the yeah, end. Mon the the monologue at the end, yeah. Unbelievably powerful. How, how hard did you have to pinch her in a thigh to hold it together? No, I think I, I, you know, my stony exterior probably did uh, melt a little bit. I had a few tears in my eyes. It's, it's a very um, kind of interesting thing that, that befell the, the country and almost the, the world. That, you know, whether you're a royalist, whether you're a monarchist, and those two are different, by the way, uh, or whether you are anti-monarchy i think everybody um was incredibly respectful yeah. and understood what we'd witnessed after over the last 70 years um her her life and and kind of 
you know, the progression they'd made as a royal family, opening the doors to allow people to understand that, as Mike said, you know, this isn't a life she chose, you know, if, if, if it, wasn't, uncle, it wasn't a life she was no, meant to have. No, if, she wasn't, if, he hadn't, if her uncle hadn't abdicated, um, it was an amazing kind of um, thing to, to watch and, and, and to see her journey and, and how, you know, she's not able or wasn't able to have any kind of political beliefs and almost being able to be so powerful but inactive if you know what I mean, to yeah. be able to tread that line and to do so much, whether it was stuff with Northern Ireland, whether it was visiting um, countries, whether it was hosting dignitaries, whether it was the number of prime ministers and presidents that she dealt with, being able to have such an impact without being able to have an impact was, I think, what spoke volumes. And I know people, for example, who are, who are anti-monarchy, they, you know, they talk about the royal family, the cost and what they do, but I think you know, what, she's a, what she was able to do was so, so important. Um, and I felt really sad about the whole thing. I woke up every single morning with kind of like a bit of a dull, yeah. almost like a dull ache internally, just, you know, very sad that we'd watched someone so incredible pass away and it was almost a ver very much the end of an era, you know, because if you look at the world at large at the moment, you know, we're always striving for role models, you know, that obviously, for, for, you know, uh, well, we talked about it uh, ad nauseum on this podcast that for me, sexism is alive and sexism is alive and real. You see it all the time in different places. Misogyny is a real thing. And we talk a lot about um, women and, and young girls looking to find inspirational um, people, where they find them, are they pop stars, are they reality stars. But actually in front of all of our eyes, we had the most sort of uh, intensely uh, special woman leading the way, dealing with you know, powerful men with egos the size of houses and putting them in their place, leading by example, not fussing, not moaning, doing her duty to, to the letter. And, you know, and getting on with what was a, a pretty rigorous routine, never giving up, never demanding anything better, talked about her boys. And I think for me, she was the greatest role model and, and, and she was the, the, the best, the best of us. Um, and I, yeah, and I, and I just think it was, it, it was, it was amazing. And I, I think what was even more sort of outstanding was ordinarily the average person in the street is so focused on putting you know, food on the table, keeping the lights on, working. And we allowed a vocal minority who, you know, want to cause fuss about everything but because everybody's attention was on it it was positive yeah. it was a really nice place to be it was really really good because the majority who don't normally speak on social media on twitter on all these things because they're too busy living were commenting and all of the nonsense got drowned out and then just after the funeral on monday Everyone else went back to work to carry on to what they're doing, and then all the you know the Holly Willoughby and Philip Schofield stuff came up because people didn't have anything to do, and those vocal vocal minority were back to their old tricks. And I thought it was a really nice thing to show that when everybody's attention is on something, and it's a good cause, just how powerful that is. Whether you love her, whether you didn't like her, whether you don't think monarchy is right or not, it was really really important. I think it was a nice wake up call to remind us all that the world is not a bad place, and when you're united in something, you're united in respect, it can be incredibly positive. Nailed it. I love that point. Uh, yeah, I, I and uh, the thing that always kept is it's like the world has lost their grandmother yeah. in some way. I know well, so I was in Dallas the weekend of of the funeral, the three days before, and everywhere you went, every flag was at half mast in Dallas, mm. all around the world. I think you're absolutely right. Everybody, I mean, four point one billion people stopped to watch it on the Monday. Did you that. feel that as part of it? Or were you just very much in the family? And then, did you did you recognise that this was an event the world had stopped to watch? It, it, yeah, it has to be yeah. the most watched event in the history of planet yeah, Earth. Yeah, I don't think you it, you you would think it, you'd sort of dawn on that. It was what sort of when you turned on the highlights, you saw everything. You saw, uh, you know, even though being in London a couple of days through that through the week uh, prior, um, you know, and what happened in Green Park, what they did with the flowers, then. Been lucky enough to go to Windsor and then seeing all the flowers had just been put up the long, the long mile, and then had friends who were in the, who were in the long walk, um, uh, sending me messages, photos, and it, you know that's sort of where you just gain the importance. You know, she, you could easily say, well, why don't you just watch it on TV? You get better coverage. But it's again, it goes back to what Hask was saying. It was so positive mm. to be there. Yeah. It's it's been such a sort of all-consuming experience on so many levels, and you know there was the, the the pilgrimage element that you talk of, people wanting to go and pay their respects, etc. One of the things that I've enjoyed the most has been the stories that have come out about yeah. you know she was our queen and she was our leader, and there was a huge amount of respect, but she was 
unbelievably cool as well. I mean, you talk about the story about if it's good enough for my boys, it's good enough for me. But the, the, Im- ama- the, Ameri- the American tra- uh, traveller, <laughs> that's, tourist, that's yeah. the tourist, oh, is a great story. Up l- absolutely all. fantastic. It's just an insane story. But And there was, a, there was a lovely story about the guest that she sat next to at lunch who I think was as Aleppo. And, and she said, you know, how is it? Oh, how, you know, how, how traumatic has it been? And he began to break down. And just instead of trying to sort of find it awkward, she just opened a box of biscuits on, on the on the table in front of her and said, let's feed the corgis. I always find that helps. And sort of the moment just passed and he managed to regain his composure. There was a fabulous... She said, like, it, it goes, that's much better now, isn't that's it? That's much yeah, better yeah, now, yeah, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. And there was an amazing one about the guard who had the bottle of water under his bear skin, which she'd given to him because it was 110 degrees. Just, I, 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 I suppose I reflect on that and think, is it good that we didn't know about that? Because that sort of thing erodes... The respect that you have at the time. She was always very good about don't know too much. I, I need to be seen to be believed, etc. I also think that that is why then everyone she sh- she shared private moments with people, but yes. not that, but not to the many. Yeah. So then that that was the beauty of her. She is, you know, she, she knew everything and never she never burdened other people with it. She kept, you know, she had that private moment. She'd move on. She'd never talk about that again. She wouldn't go and. Tell us one, yeah, yeah, yeah. She, you know, and then it'll come out naturally in its own course, and you know, mainly it's in a place where you're trying to celebrate what her life was and and what she did. But in a world where everybody is telling you how to do things, and social media, and you know, we're all being told what to think and how to act, etc. She just did everything through through display. Yes, she never needed to say. It was just all done through kind of yeah. showing people. Yeah, how the, to the their greatest life. of that was was obviously when the duke died. Yeah, you know, uh, yeah, being all her family sat on the other side, just having to look at her, and all they want, you know, I would imagine every one of them was thinking, we just want to be that next her to her and give her, and because of where the pandemic was at that time, she made a real statement to everyone else. Unfortunately, our government wasn't watching, but uh, of how uh, how it needed to be. The, the extraordinary thing that's come out is that everybody, and I think everybody probably in the moment did, but everybody has felt a little sense of ownership of Her Majesty. And I, I, the, the one I would use is my, I've never met the Queen. I remember actually seeing her at Ascot once, and I very rarely get my photo, but I remember taking a photograph of her in her bright yellow coat, etc. And And I mean, she must be one of the most photographed people in the history of planet Earth, as we said. But my sister met her, in 1989 and she would have given her a posy at Port Regis School because she was at a local school etc and I remember for years and years and years we had a box of VHS's and there were five videos in there four of them were films and one of them was Alice Meets the Queen Mm -hmm. and it's just sort of one of those things which is you know it just gathered dust for years but it just was the touch point with, uh, did you ever meet? I did. The, I did, did. I did. I never got to sort of do the official uh, official lineup, but I was at the, I was at Buckingham Palace um, a couple of times and was there. <laughs> invited. I'm not invited. On the, the window ledge, yeah. yeah. nose against the glass, yeah. Yeah, dressed as Batman. <laughs> oh, yeah. I um, and I remember uh, it was interesting because it was after I'd. I'd um, I mean, I met her at Tins's wedding again. In yeah. in, in did you sort bowl of... up a Sarah Joe's house? <laughs> Hello, yeah. Hello. Yeah, no, I didn't. Business I, card in the top yeah. pocket. <laughs> she she shook my hand and when she drew it back, there was a business card in there. <laughs> um, no, I and I met her at obviously Mike's Mike's wedding. But when I was at Buckingham Palace, I remember she was sort of lining up and I was Millie in the background and uh, she looked at me and and smiled and raised her eyebrows as if to say like I know and I was like okay I'm sorry so I didn't get to talk. Did she just she... touch you and go take yeah. it to the yeah. Yeah. But yeah. generally it was that it was that moment of look of where even. You know, I just find it quite funny that she obviously even the was monarch all, knew you were an arse. Yeah, is what we're basically, saying, yeah. 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 And it, look, she was aware of it, and she, you know, she was only it was it like, or just a momentary flicker, but it was a smile and a sort of a raised eyebrows to look at me as if to say, you know, I've got your number. So yeah. I just I scuttled off, but that was kind of a fun, um, a funny moment. But I, I was going to say, well, my favourite part of the whole affair was when someone had to come on the news and say could you please stop leaving Paddington Bears and, and uh, marmalade sandwiches, sandwiches in the park <laughs> I mean how British you have to be to, to do that it was madness uh, yeah because I, I first met her in 1992 I was Did at you school really? yeah doing what because I was at Queen Elizabeth Grammar School and it was our 400th anniversary and she, she came to the school for fun and I was in I think I was in a science class and she came in got the Bunsen burner on and we had to, <laughs> sodium we got, on water uh, we got, off with we your, got to, uh, periodic table yeah we got to say hello to her then I didn't tell her I was going to be I was going to say did you say before you knew it be seeing you around <laughs> see you later you that would much, be great foresight if I had yeah, how much sure. small talk and how funny people would have been yeah. with her yeah. you know the most famous woman on the planet 
the most recognisable woman on the planet and gets introduced every single day and wheeled out to people and just how weirdly people would have reacted and what they would have said. And like you said, Mike tells a great story on, on the on the Kubel Rugby Tour show about, you know, being reminded before you meet her, it's your majesty first, then it's um, ma'am. And whatever you do, men bow from the head, you know, not from the, the waist. And don't curtsy and, she, and you know tins you know you got generals curtsying by mistake you know <laughs> men bowing like mr bean all the kind of stuff that goes that goes with it i would imagine she ever just sat back at the end of the day we had to do bonnie and gin going oh my god you know the, the chat levels must have been the book, so the book could have been incredible you, you know when you thought you fall into not uh, you you're following a routine uh, uh, so i almost curtsied to the king the other day did you really? Yeah, without thinking about it. I was just following behind my wife, saw her curtsy, and I sort of, and then fortunately didn't. Did you, did you go curtsy myself. into bow? Or yeah, did you... sort, of, sort of. It was a, a lower bow. Right. Um, yeah, it's just, you just, uh, you could, uh, like, just. Did you uh, duly clock said, it and sort of raise an no, eyebrow? No, or did he, no I, 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 I think I styled it out all right. I, no, I might have looked like I'd stubbed something on my, my toe or <laughs> something on the floor. Was this in front of 4.1 billion no, people no, no, or was this no, just a no, private affair? No, this, that wasn't in front uh, of How will that dynamic? I'm, I'm interested actually. I, I was going to ask you this off air, but we might cut out. How, how does that dynamic change? Because I know you've always spoken. Um, very highly about everybody in, in in the royal family, but it, in particular, you know, Charles you know, is a very very good man. But you're always aware of you know you've talked very candidly about you're always aware of that of that situation. You never take it for granted. But actually, meet, meeting him now, does it have a cult? I mean, you tried to curtsy, but will it change the dynamic? <laughs> will you have a back, bit of back or will the you dynamic. Be, you know, do you know um, what I mean? Yeah, interesting. I, I it won't. I'm very aware of of uh, the official. So, but then I think once the official bit's done. Uh, then it, uh, I, would, I would, well, I don't know. I, would, I think I would have a way closer relationship because of what uh, history. Whereas when I, well, for anyone who ever met the Queen, she was always the Queen. So you only knew her yes. as that, and you held her in that yeah. regard, whatever. Whereas Charles has obviously done um, so much, so much work with the Prince's Trust, and everyone's met him in his role as the Prince of Wales. Um, now he's gone up to the to the king will people i, I hope hopefully i no. wonder yeah, i wonder but also i wondered if, if a lot of times what you would have seen on tv the tradition there's always a person lurking in the background to kind of tell you the protocol i wonder if you know before you do it someone's going to whip out and go mike you know you know put the, he's not going to down that pint relax take your foot off the gas this is how you need to do it you know what i mean no, I, Just remember, I, there will always be that person but i, I fine I'll always say I'll be uncontrollable. <laughs> uncontrollable. <laughs> That's the quote. Thanks for coming. Right. One right. of the things um, that I say, it's not, it's not a regret necessarily, but I wish she had known what the last 10 days or whatever it's been yeah. had held because of that that love and affection. Do you, do you think there was a recognition for I, I, what I, she I, had done during I, her lifetime? Yeah, I, I, from, I don't, from the Queen's perspective, I don't think she'd have ever thought about that. She would really? Have, no, she'd have just thought she's done her duty. And she'd hoped she'd done it to her best of her ability. I think we can all drink to that. Uh, and uh, and that, that, but that's that's who she was. That's that's all she, you know, all she wanted was people do their best and put their best foot forward. What what, what did the reaction mean to those around you? Uh, no, I think I think everyone was blown away. I, you know, you ex, you expect an outpouring of love, but I think how it was, uh, I think the the world leaders that came in no one's not 100% have never accepted their invitation yeah without questioning immediately come back said yeah we're coming i don't think that's ever happened before and then for them i think one uh guy high up said and then never to argue about who gets sat where who does this who does that i need to be in front of him or i need to be there None of that was. And they all shared done. a bus. Did you see them, yeah. but they weren't even like executive buses with tables. They were school buses. <laughs> that faint smell of vomit in the background. Do you know what well, I mean? Well, like, sandwiches yeah. on the back seat. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah and, and I think that that sort of blew everyone away who was organising it. Was there was no jo uh, jostling for position. There was tell us what to do. We'll we'll do it. Yeah, and that just shows how much how regarded she was. Well, I mean, and actually, you know, if you look at her. her sort of staunch religious beliefs you know f and as the you know as um the archbishop of canterbury said you, you know we will we will meet again you know she 
for what she believes, you know, she probably would have witnessed all of this and is onto a better place and, and sees it all and, and values it. And Mike said it, you know, she would just worried about a duty, but it's on to a, it's on to another chapter, and, and that's. You I'm know. Still enjoying a carriage drive with the Duke. Yeah, with I the love it. You put that picture up. Was it? Did that's you put the, I did yeah, that, one, that, one that one. That with yeah. the with the That made me. That yeah. made me cry. That maybe that that cartoon of her, you know, uh, Lily Bet, and I, yeah, I was a bit like, oh my God, there's something in my eye. I had to go and have a minute because that was, yeah, that was really emotional. I think that has been the the best thing is the the emotion from from mine has come from people telling stories about her. Yeah, I think that's where because they're real. They're 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 a true f- reflection of of the, what the Queen stood for and what she was, and they're the, they're the best things about it. It's been an extraordinary 10 days and inevitably everyone's got their own views and their own recollections and their own thoughts and their own emotions with it. I, I suppose just in summing up, do you do you recognise now how lucky you have been to have had a very small but yeah, quite yeah. intimate audience with the I, d- I do, but I also have loads of regrets. I have loads of regrets like about not asking her so many more things. You know, having nervousness when I, you know, when you sit down to talk, you get that lucky seat of being sat next to her. But, what would you, you ask her now but, if you could? Well, no, just going back through history and everything that she's possibly seen. Obviously, f- 15 uh, prime ministers. I don't know how many uh, presidents it are. It is. Um, but, to go, minutes, but to go through everything, you know, when she's meeting dictators, she has to stay neutral. She has to just perform her duty. And, and Did just, you ever ask you to do that? I, asked, I, start, I, was, I was sort of starting to get to that point but no, I hadn't barreled in. I know you would have oh, barreled in. Oh, God. Hold it straight. Question number one. Donald Trump. Trump. Yeah. Yes or no? <laughs> Gar- First question, yeah. Donald Trump. Guaranteed, like? guaranteed, I I did ask that, but it's guaranteed that, you know, it, once you sit there, you, it's not that easy to just no. barrel into I would have been like, budge up, budge up, budge up. Yeah. Right, right, right. <laughs> you know, what, I want to know what Churchill was like. Yeah, that would have been amazing. You know what? What, what was what was he like? What was the, you know any really embarrassing moments? What any you know? Did you ever worry that any dictators were coming in? Do you have to put the silverware away if anyone was nicking anything? <laughs> There'd be so many. That questions. would only be you. That everything would go back under lock the and key. Is, I reckon they probably do have that when you go to Windsor Castle, Buckingham Palace. People try to rinse things. I remember when I went to Number Ten, number 10 Downing Street, I had to use the toilet. I mean, what were you doing at Number Ten Downing Street? <laughs> I get around, pal. You do. Don't worry about like me. Water. I just went for a wee. I didn't obviously do anything bad. Well, there, you went but... for a wee in <laughs> Number Ten Downing Street. He, he, yeah, just knocked on the door. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. no, we went there. I don't know why I went there. For some reason I went there. Stealing the silverware. No, I didn't steal anything, but I imagine people do want to steal mementos. Off the, off the back of a Grand Slam or something. Yes, probably. Was so much silverware, don't no, I talk I, about the it. The only time I went there was on the back of the World, World Cup. Cup. Really? And we tried to get um, Gordon Brown to let us off tax for winning the World Cup. He was like, no. Didn't happen. <laughs> no. Only for people in high places. Um, remarkable. Um, it's been remarkable. And it's remarkable for us that you have been sort of... As, as close to it as you have, really. I mean, I think, as we said, go on. We just need to clear one thing up, because this is your chance now. Because <clears throat> uh, we've obviously been a bit of a somber tone and everything else like that through it, but the medals. Oh, yes. Do you want to just cover off the medals? Because I, I how many years did you serve in Afghanistan out of interest? <laughs> <laughs> it has been an interesting one, the medals, because uh, we had this discussion, the fact that I hate wearing them anyway, because I think you would be the same, possibly yourself. Like, you class medals as a, a military yeah. sort yeah. of honour. Now, the Jubilee medals... So any serviceman, I am deeply appreciative of your service and I have not served anywhere. And I actually haven't done anything to achieve those medals apart from being in the family. Uh, So the Jubilee medals obviously got married in 2011. So 2012 was her diamond jubilee. So you get a medal if you're married in the family for being part of the family jubilee. The people who work in her household get a medal. If you've been serving in the armed forces for five years and you're actively service, you get one too. So it's it's harder for the military to actually get a Jubilee medal unless they serve for a long time through a long period. Now, and also, there have been a lot more because you get a lot more celebrations the later on in life. So 50, 60, 70. Um, so, so if I'd have, if I'd have been if I'd have, no, I still wouldn't have done. So yeah, that's why I got that one. The other one was an MBE. So I haven't no, I haven't been. Well, on you tour. did earn one. One. Out, uh, how I mean, many have you got in total? Three. Yeah. So one out of three ain't bad. And also, he's, he's about, he has been under fire a few times. Uh, Queenstown, 2011, Las Vegas. <laughs> Both of them were some heavy conflicts that deserved some, some recognition. But you did. Get, but we, I want to clear it up, not because I was taking the mic, because yeah. obviously I did take the mic straight away, but because you were getting some heat and people well, were being very no, confused getting, about it. Like, I, I did get a, a bit, a lot of unnecessary. You don't have to 
like shout at me on, on social media, by the way. You can just ask. And if you just ask, I'll probably reply to you, as one person did. Thank you for doing that. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I can't control it. You just get a uniform list. You get a uniform list as well. And it says um, the dress code is strict, as you can imagine. Yeah. And it's and it's a full morning suit, unless you're military, wear your military outfit, full morning suit, um, but, uh, medals, one star, one something else, if you have a star. I obviously don't have a star, but... But you, and also you, you have to wear them. Yeah. So, that's it. There was a quote, which I was going to finish with, which the Queen herself said, sport has a wonderful way of bringing together people and nations. She has certainly left us united yeah. in her passing, hasn't she? Yeah, she definitely has. Good. Quite extraordinary. And it quite extraordinary 10 days, which we will never forget. We will never forget it. And I think it's... Um... I'm glad I was around to see it and to experience it, and it will live on in in memory. And let's see what King, you know, the Queen is dead. Long live the long King. Live in, long live the King. Yeah. A small momentary reflection from the three of us. I'm sure you will have all done exactly the same off the back of what has been, as we said, a very, very emotional and um, highly memorable um, ten days or so. And I think just a, a thank you. I know other people have put it far better than we do, but we were saying at the time, weren't we, how enormously grateful we felt. And um, I think that is a sentiment that will be echoed onwards and forever. Uh, we are back tomorrow with our pre-season launch, which was filmed before, obviously, the events of the last 10 days, but a lot of fun um, to be had. So do tune in for that. For now, though, we have been the good, the bad and the rugby. As we said, we're back tomorrow with our first proper episode of the season and we'll have some special guests in that one and a whole lot of fun. But thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. And here's to a very good season three.